So hey everybody, welcome to ARE Live. I'm Mark Tier, the founder of Black Spectacles. And during the webinar today, we are speaking with distinguished learning designer, Dawn Snyder. And she's gonna be helping us uh, understand the best study tactics and strategies to help you pass the ARE. It's really a unique and um, special um, episode here uh, that we get to, to be with Dawn. We're gonna go through the most effective ways to manage your motivation, your learning style, and how to manage the content so you're prepared uh, to be successful on exam day. Uh, we actually have a downloadable handout today for you to follow along and create your own study plan. Uh, for those of you who are listening here live, you can download that under the handout in the GoToWebinar panel. So go over there and take a peek and you can download that PDF. If you're listening, uh, of course, uh, online um, uh, after the live broadcast, then you can download the uh, attached PDF, which is likely uh, available to you. So that's what we're that's what we got going today. A quick mention about the ARE. It's December 17th, 2020. The ARE is now online. Uh, you can take the test online, finally. Uh, I believe they call it ARE 5.1 now, so it's a slightly different exam. Um, I understand that the, uh, the changes to the exam uh, are not around content, so the content is exactly the same. It's organized into the same exams. But actually what they did in order to take the test online is they reduced the, uh, the number of questions, they, uh, I believe they increased the frequency of breaks. Um, and there's a couple of other um, smaller uh, adjustments that they made it made uh, for the new online exams. So it's really exciting, especially during the pandemic, uh, but also into the future that you can take this test online. It's a really big deal uh, in terms of rem removing that roadblock for everyone who's taken the exam. So I wanna make sure everyone's aware of that. I think you can still take the test. Um, uh, you can still take the test in person, um, and the test, the NCARB, or sorry, the Prometric Testing Centers uh, allowed uh, allow for that, although I think in a limited capacity. So if that's still the road you want to go, I think you can still do that. So just know that since the capacity is limited, then you want to make sure you register for your test well in advance so you get the test uh, um, scheduled uh, for when you want to take it. But of course, uh, to avoid those problems, you can take it online. So. Um, there's a, a link that we're sharing in the chat uh, where you can visit NCARB's site for all the details so you know what's different um, or let's say the requirements that you are going to need to sort of uh, follow in order to take the test online. So that's really good and exciting news. Uh, a few things about Black Spectacles for those of you who don't know us or are joining us for the first time. Black Spectacles is the first ever NCARB approved test prep provider for all six of the ARE 5.0 divisions. We offer comprehensive test prep for the ARE with video lectures, practice exams, flashcards, and virtual workshops, all available online, and with memberships available either for individual architects or firms or chapters or schools. And if you would like to learn a little bit more about that uh, and to see what kind of materials we have, you can go to blackspectacles.com to, um, to check all that stuff out. And we're dropping a link in the chat box as well. Uh, if you're interested in getting your boss to pay for your Black Spectacles membership, go to blackspectacles.com slash firms. And actually, we're offering an, uh, an end of year special for new firm members. So make sure you fill out the form on that site, on our website. Uh, and we'll get back to you before the first of the year. Uh, we're also sharing a link about that. At our next ARE live broadcast on January 21st, 2021, we will review a, the construction and evaluation mock exam with our good old friend, Mike Newman, uh, will go through about five questions that cover the CE knowledge and skills related to uh, topics like bidding and negotiation, support of the construction process, and evaluation of completed projects. Um, and the idea there is you're going to get a good vibe and a good sense of some of the topics and a little extra practice. Today, we're going to be engaging exclusively on our online ARE community. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I would encourage you to go uh, over to community.blackspectacles.com and let's see, uh, if you go to the homepage there, uh, you'll see a big box that says ARE, um, ARE Live. And then if you click that, uh, the first topic, which is pinned to the top, says ARE Live Study Strategies for Passing the ARE. Um, so that's where we're going to be answering questions and engaging with all of you. Um, uh, actually, one of the cool things we're doing is we're giving away a free T-shirt uh, to everyone who posts in that thread. Um, so even if you just go say hi, go over to the community, say hi, um, that's enough to enter you to win a free t-shirt. So I'd encourage all of you to do that. Um, and again, if you have questions as we go throughout, 
this um, this episode today, please post your questions there, and either I'll answer them, uh, some members from our team will answer them, or I will um, lob them up to Dawn uh, during the live session. Uh, and again, uh, if you want to follow a link, we're going to drop a link in the chat box for that. Lastly, we have a special discount on Black Spectacles individual memberships, which we'll share at the end of the episode. Um, and so stick around for that. As I mentioned, our, our guest today is Dawn Snyder. Dawn is an award-winning learning designer and college professor. Uh, for the past few years, Dawn has worked with us here at Black Spectacles to help ensure your success by helping us uh, develop um, sort of the learning infrastructure for all of our content. Uh, Dawn brings her knowledge of best practices in learning to her work uh, around uh, learning topics, curriculum design, test development, and certification. She's worked with some incredibly wonderful uh, companies like Apple, uh, HP, Sun Microsystems, Chase, um, and many others. Um, and what she says uh, she does is she helps companies um, develop learning programs around the big problems that they have in their organizations. Um, and so she's been an incredibly wonderful asset and advisor uh, for us here at Black Spectacles. And with that, I'm so pleased uh, to welcome Dawn to ARE Live. Dawn, I'll hey. hand it over to you. Hey, thanks, Mark. And I'm so glad all of you are here. I wish we could have like a personal conversation about learning because it is kind of a personal topic. But I do know something about each of you who are attending today, and that is that you're taking some steps, uh, committing to some success around getting ready for the ARE. And that's kind of the focus of what we're going to talk about. Um, you know, Mark told you I work with organizations and help them create these large programs. But, you know, learning begins in the heads of individuals. And for some reason, we're not really taught how to study in school. I'm not sure why that is, but so today, even though learning is very personal and very individual, what I wanted to do is summarize some of the strategies that have been shown to help people get ready for tests like the ARE and for other performance situations and share some of that with you so that you can commit yourself to being successful in this context. So like Mark pointed out, we do have a handout uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel that you can download and use to take notes. And we're doing that in the spirit of kind of practice what you preach, because we know that if you commit to actively processing while you're learning something, that you will go away with more content and um, the better opportunity to apply that to what you're doing. I also, we've included a couple of polls. So from time to time, I will be asking you your opinion about what it is that we're talking about. So I hope you will participate fully in those to get the full experience of this podcast. So let's go on to the first slide, Kate. And um, the main point I want to share with you is that you're all exceptional learners. Learning can be really easy. When we're learning something that is focused on our interests, our passion, or our goals, we usually can do it effortlessly. We learn how to walk. We learn not to touch a hot stove. We learn the statistics of our favorite uh, ball players, that kind of thing. But when we are faced with a situation where it might not be completely aligned with our current interests or passion, then we have to employ different strategies to make sure we're engaging. So you're probably wondering, why is there a Pokemon card on this slide? Well, I'm gonna tell you a story about learning. When my son was in elementary school, he had to do a project to prepare for a test. And the test, he had to be able to put uh, all of the countries in South America on a map. He also had to be able to explain the size of the country, the population, the official language, the major exports of the country. In other words, not only locate the country on a map, but remember all these specific facts about these countries. Well, I can tell you that studying for this test was a real challenge. There were tears and he cried too. When we took a break from studying, 
He said, let's play this game. So he got out his Pokemon cards. And for those of you who know the game, um, you will know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, what you need to know is there are a variety of these creatures and each card represents the creature. And each card or each creature has a number of categories of information. And you use those categories, you compare them to battle your creature against another creature. Well, here I was despairing that my son had the capability of learning this material, but he could remember all these facts and categories of information about these things that he was so very interested in. So we made map -em on cards. We created a strategy for him where he created a card like the one you see in front of you for say Brazil. And for each of those cards, he designed what categories of information would go on the card. By studying in that way, he was able to link something that he was very successful at with something that he was struggling with. And so that's the focus of our conversation today is how do you create a system for yourself where you understand, remember, and perform? And we're calling that a study strategy. So on the next slide, we can see that what we're really talking about, like I said, is very personal. It's about your brain's operations manual. And as Mark said, we're really focused on how do we take what we know about how the brain works to focus it on a specific situation and manage and control your own learning. So there are three areas that you need to consider and we'll go through each one in more detail, managing your motivation, managing your learning and then mastering the content to get ready for an exam. But one of the things that I, I want to point out as you're thinking through what we're talking about is that many of us have created our study habits and our learning strategies over time and in school. And I don't think I'm telling you something new if I suggest that maybe you have some bad habits in your arsenal. So I want to suggest to you that this is an opportunity to review things that you know work for you, to consider some new things, and also to recognize that you may have to adjust your study strategies um, for each different test because the challenge for you may be slightly different, um, but always with the goal of increasing your chances for success. The stuff we share here is not just for an ARE test, but you can share this with your kids or with others because it applies to any high stakes performance situation. So going on to the first chapter, managing your motivation. You're gonna wonder why would we spend time talking about motivation? Because that's something that is so very personal and each of you are in a different place. But you know, if I were able to measure the motivation among each of you um, who are uh, attending this podcast, I could easily predict those of you who will be more successful versus those who are gonna be less successful in passing the test. And I'm not um, exaggerating when I tell you that your attitude, your motivation is going to be the best predictor for your ability to be successful. So let's go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about uh, your ability to learn. You know, 2020 has been really a dumpster fire. Let's, let's just put it out there. It's just been an incredible year. Um, but there are a lot of other things besides um, the situation we've encountered in 2020 that can impact your ability to think and learn. And that ability is limited when you feel overwhelmed or threatened when you're afraid of something or if you're sad or grieving or angry or frustrated. So there is a really strong body brain connection and these emotions um, that you feel in your brain and in your body will kind of overwhelm your ability to think and process information clearly. So one of the things that test situations sometimes do is kind of peak these emotions in all of us. So let's go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about how we can open our mind to learning. So these are some sort of uh, general principles that you need to keep in mind. First of all, you need to commit to mastery of the material versus 
trying or spending time or passing the test. So your focus on committing to mastery is one key way to open your mind. A second one is believing that you can do it. And I believe that you can, you're all here, you're all taking the right steps, but you need to believe that you can do it. You need to feel challenged by this opportunity rather than threatened as if uh, somebody is going to perhaps hurt you or put you at risk. And you also need to be curious. Now, I will go on and talk about these in a little bit more detail, but what I'd like to do is pull up the first poll now and ask you to, to think, reflect for yourself and think which one of these motivations is your strength? Committing to mastery of the material, the belief in yourself that you can do it, uh, the exhilaration with the challenge of being tested or your curiosity. Pick the one that you think is your strength. And I can see the polls in progress and um, we'll give you a few more seconds to put your answers in there and then we'll reveal what that poll has shown. This is awesome, Dawn. Thanks for uh, for doing this. Um, we don't yeah. usually do the polls and uh, it's cool to see the, the responses coming in. Oh, excellent. All right, so look at the, the strengths we have here. And it's interesting how it's split. Committing to mastery of the material seems to be our winner and feeling challenged, not threatened seems to be the one that we have more uh, challenges with. So good for you guys. And what I would suggest is that all of these need to be something that you need to think about um, and I invite you to take an opportunity once we're done with this webinar to really sit down and probe what your ideas are about learning. So let's go on to very some very specific things that you might be able to do to control your motivation. One of the things that's recommended by research and I see people have a lot of success in is putting your goals in, in writing and revisiting them. Um, what you're going to accomplish and how you're going to accomplish it is a real good way to, um, to, to put that goal forward and make it a priority. And the idea that it's in writing is pretty important as well. Uh, again, if you talk about passing the test, it's a little bit too general. You need to really focus on the content that you're going to master. Sharing your goals with your network is another great strategy um, because it it makes you make that public commitment. It makes you put some, um, some teeth behind what you plan to do. And when you make that public commitment, it's a great way to have other people help hold you accountable. Another thing that's really critical are being positive in your statements about yourself. Um, I think some people have a lot of um, success creating even affirmations. I'm going to pass this test. I am going to spend time preparing. I am um, increasing every day in my ability to answer these test questions, things like that. And I'll tell you, I can tell when somebody is in trouble when they have a lot of negative self-talk. So if you hear things like, or if you say things like, I'm not good at taking tests, or I'm not good at, at remembering information, you're telling your body what to do. You're actually giving it instruction. So you want to watch for and eliminate that kind of self-talk. Part of the motivation and being in control is learning everything you can about the test or testing process. And for that, I would refer you to the ARE handbook. The more you feel like you understand what's What's this test about? Why was it created? What's in it? Um, how can you best think about the test itself? Helps you stay in control and also keeps the test and testing process in perspective. You know, the testing process is, and the learning process in general, you guys, is as much about failure as it is about success. You know, when babies are learning to walk, we don't, when they fall down, we don't say to them, oh, you're a bad baby. 
you were trying to walk and you <laughs> fell back down on your little diapered bottom. Bad, bad baby. No. So the testing process is an opportunity for you to, you know, put yourself out there to try uh, this new thing, to master this content. And remember that the prep will support you not only in taking the test, but it helps establish that foundation of being a better architect that will serve you throughout your career. So these are some tips that have been successful with people that I coach and come from the research about how to manage your motivation. That last one's really great, Dawn. I just want to sort of point that out. So many, for those of you that are new to the process, this is something that I feel like every architect when they're done and they finally achieve licensure, they all say the same thing, including myself, which is, yeah, that sucked, but um, I'm definitely a better architect uh, now that I went through that process. The other thing I'll say, uh, which is something that our good friend Mike Newman has said for a long time, is that um, sometimes, you know, just, you know, just taking the test um, is great preparation for how to pass the test, if that makes sense. In fact, he's often challenged um, a, a room full of architects in saying that, um, you know, if all you architects uh, were actually business students, half of you would just go take the test without studying, knowing that just based on the laws of probability, you'd probably pass half the tests uh, based on your own knowledge and or uh, based on probability. So it's really interesting to talk about how the test by itself actually supports you um, in, in, in your progress with learning the material. That's really great. Thanks, Don. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, for those of you who are um, Simon Sinek fans out there, I know that I am, um, he really talks about focusing on what, what is your why. And that, uh, that why is what can keep you motivated and moving forward. And again, these tests are not just a, a, a stopping point along the way. Like Mark said, they are designed, when the ARE designs them, they go out, and I've helped other organizations do this, they go out and they look at the professional practice to figure out what people need to know. So it's not a perfect reflection of reality because it is, you know, a forced choice test done, you know, in a room. So it's not a perfect reflection of the reality of, of the practice of architecture, but the information is certainly foundational and they can demonstrate that it's important in its use. So um, I, again, I think if you can work on managing your motivation, you can just by doing that alone, you can increase your chances of being successful in meeting this goal. So let's go on and talk about some of the other cool things that you can be doing to increase your chances of success. And one of those is managing your learning. So if we were creating an instruction manual for the brain, this would be a whole chapter. And what would we would be doing is talking about things about your environment that you can control and set up for yourself, as well as what kind of framework you create for your study. So go on to the next slide. And now you're gonna ask me what on earth is there an image of somebody in a gym? Well, you know people who go to gym or before COVID went to gyms <laughs> or go to work out, whatever. You go to, who go to the gym to work out, but what they really do is they're talking on the phone, they're admiring themselves in their mirror, um, they don't use their time well. And you know, you're likely to hear them complain that they're not getting results. Um, you know, there are also those people who who go in and do the exercises that are most fun for them or the machines that are the most fun for them and skip the other things that are important to overall fitness. So besides attitude, the biggest study mistake that you can make is spending time on doing the wrong things, not doing the right things that'll get you results. So let's go to the next slide and talk about time at your study gym. So like we did before, these are kind of the general principles and then I'll talk to you about some very specific actions that you can take to put those principles into practice. None of these are going to surprise you. Um, you want to create and work in a distraction-free zone, again, to the extent that that's possible. You want to commit the time to study, and that means you really have to set aside and make it a priority to do that time 
the correlating principle to that is that more shorter sessions are better than one long one. And by better, I mean more effective at helping you learn and remember information. The other thing that you want to do when you're spending time at your study gym is alternate the types of study activities in every study session that you do. But again, the correlating principle is always include review as part of your, your study session. So let's go on and talk about some of the tips for managing your learning. Okay, so when we talk about creating a, an environment free of distractions, you want to create a physical environment that's quiet and well lit. Um, to the extent you can, you want to be in a room or a space where you're not constantly pulled by other things that can grab your attention. And you know better than I do what those things are for you. Um, during times of COVID and you have to work in your home, sometimes you have to give some thought to this, but I encourage you to be creative, to find a way, knowing what distracts you, to take some time to set up your environment so that it works well for you. You wanna work in the same place or two as much as possible because there's something about when you go, when you develop a good habit of working in one environment and you go and you sit in that place, then your mind and your body are prepared uh, to, to study. It's That's why they tell you not to eat when you're watching television because then when you sit down to watch television, you automatically think, oh, I need something to munch on. So it's the same principle, just kind of uh, applied in reverse. The other thing you want to do, and this is really important if you are spending a lot of time where you live with your family or networks, is getting your network to support you. So if you have a family, if you have roommates, you want to make them as much a part of the process as you can. And let me give you a couple of examples that have been working for people. So you can work with your kids to create a little sign that says that this is your study time. They can, you can have them help you color it. Then when it's time for you to study, your children can escort you to your study place. They can help you hang the sign on the door. You can kiss them goodbye and send them off to other things. Now I'm talking about children, but you know, you can have a similar routine with other roommates. You want to, encourage people to be part of your success rather than having to feel like you are locking yourself away. Another thing that's very helpful is finding an accountability partner. Now that might be somebody who is working on something of their own. Um, that might be somebody who is also studying for the ARE. It might be somebody who's um, got something completely else uh, going on, but who is a good mentor or friend to you. So somebody who you can say, this is something that I'm going to do and I need your support in doing it and have them check in on you on a regular basis. Another management tip. And again, these aren't things, this isn't rocket science, you guys. This is stuff that you already do. But in presenting it to you, I'm encouraging you to think about, are you using these things effectively? So use your calendar or create one for studying. You know, you block chunks of time for meetings and for other things that are important to you. You need to block those chunks of time to study. And I would further recommend that you block those times at your productive times of day. Now, I don't know when your productive times are. My productive time happens to be in the morning. So if I can push other activities back towards the end of my day and use my morning time for something that is uh, related to learning or that requires me to be more focused, then that's the way to do that. Um, again, get your network, get your, uh, your employer, get your friends to help support you in blocking this time. And then make, make study a priority. In other words, you know there are so many things that you could be doing with your time, but studying absolutely must be a priority. So there's more tips on the next slide. So let's go take a quick look at those. And actually, Don, one of the things I just want to comment there is um, those topics. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I swear I didn't influence you creating them, but that ended up being what what I did. Um, I'm just one is example, it? of course. But yeah, like so for example. Um, 
what started to happen was, number one, I let everyone in my firm know that I was taking the tests, uh, which was really designed to make sure that um, <laughs> uh, I could leave at five yes. because in our architecture community, we all know that's not always the case. Um, uh, and so they kind of knew, oh, at lunch, oh, that's why Mark's, yeah, Mark's getting up and leaving because he studies at lunch. Oh, yeah, Mark's leaving at 530 today because, yeah, he's studying. And then I would take the, you know, in Chicago, they call it the L, the subway home. Uh, but actually, instead of going home, I would, my my wife at the time, the two of us would, and a, a good friend of mine, the three of us, we would actually go to the DePaul library. So I would just, I didn't go to DePaul, but I sort of camped out at the DePaul library and we would, you know, kind of get there at 630 and study for a couple hours. And my buddy would read his book and my wife would grade papers and we would do it pretty much like, you know, three, four times a week, you know, um, and it really did work um, because it just became a pattern that we got into. Um, my patterns became patterns that my family knew about, my friends knew about, my my coworkers knew about. So it really kind of cleared space for me to kind of get it done. And the last thing I did, which was Again, another idea I stole from someone else, which was I went ahead and I I booked my tests. I paid for them in advance. So like, I think I started taking the test in like September. I At the time it was nine tests. I bought all nine tests um, uh, right at the beginning of September. So I was already committed to taking them. And it just sort of forced me to take the test. <laughs> it forced me to not stop. It forced me to keep going, um, which is really valuable. That momentum um, was really helpful. So these are, yeah. uh, they, they resonate with me really well. Yeah, they do. And because, you know, a lot of times we think more about study tips as not being about these more macro level things. But Mark, you illustrated these concepts beautifully. You know, you had a study ritual. Um, you had a habit where you went to the same place at the same time. You had your network involved. Um, and um the only thing I would add to to what you've talked about that we haven't talked about before is, you know, it's going to be very helpful to plan out for each session what you're going to focus on and what specific activities you'll do. Uh, otherwise, it's like going to the gym and getting there, getting your gym clothes on and being ready to study and or ready to work out and say, oh, I wonder what I'm going to do today. So you already want to know when you're going to do you know, like I'm going to do arms today. I'm going to do cardio today. You know, you have an idea when you go what you're going to do and um, holding yourself accountable to that is is really critical. Um, again, I think. The word that I heard was pattern that really resonated with me, Mark. And then the other thing is really having kind of that long term plan. And this is something that you can do with the resources that you have. And that a lot of people who fail to do this then find all of a sudden the time has slipped away and they really haven't given themselves enough runway to do the preparation they need to do. And I think everyone's been there, right? In, in one situation or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, hey, let's pull up another poll. This is, I think, poll number two. So we can ask the folks who are on the call today, which of those preparation management opportunities can you commit to today for your own preparation? And you can select all that apply. Which of these can you commit to? We'll give you a few minutes here to, to answer this question. And while you're doing this, I, you know, I think a lot of these um, these suggestions in order to work, you're kind of going with the flow of your life instead of working against it. Um, and if you can make it part of the flow, a natural part of the flow, it's going to be very, very helpful for you. So let's give you about 10 more seconds so that people can put your final selections in. I'm hoping that when um, we show this poll, there will be a lot of these selected. So have people, oh, here we go, yes. All right, so I will tell you, and you know, I don't wanna be like academic professor telling you what you need to do here or anything, 
But these are all kinds of things that you probably need to think about doing in order to really ensure that you have the type, the type of success that you need, especially for all of the tests. So good for you. I see some folks making some really good commitments here, and I encourage you to consider if you can add more of these management type activities to your preparation opportunity. All right, so let's go on to the next thing. And this is probably everybody's favorite because we're gonna really be talking about how do you manage and engage with the content in the test? So now we're not talking so much about between the tests, but inside every test. And I'm gonna tell you a, a quotation I saw just recently. The human brain does not learn through consumption. It learns through creation. And so what I want to do is to encourage you to think about the fact that learning is a creative process. You have to be engaged in that creation. So let's go to the first slide in the section and talk a little bit about what that looks like. The main premise about being a creator here is that you have to engage your brain and you have to create it at the right level. So from the time I first met Mark, one of the things we were talking about was gaining skills and we use swimming as an example. So you're probably wondering what on earth there are pictures of swimming here. Well, swimming is a skill and we often learn to swim for, for one purpose or another. But the, the illustration I want, to, um, I want to show you here is that you have to prepare to learn to swim for the kind of swimming performance that you need. So on the left, the top left, you see somebody in an indoor pool who is swimming. Indoor pools have marvelous uh, controlled climate, the temperature's controlled. Look, the guy's got uh, lane markers and so, um, is not even likely to bump into a bunch of other people. The circumstances are so controlled and you can learn to swim and be successful there. But that's different than the picture in the middle where someone is swimming in a lake where you've got all kinds of variables, you know, the environment, the temperature, there might be things in the water that you need to avoid or that might be swimming near you. Um, and then you've got the example on the right of somebody, perhaps this person is affecting a white water rescue. And if I need to train you to jump from a helicopter and help somebody in very difficult and challenging waves and white water conditions, we better be practicing in a different environment than just an indoor pool. Not that that's not a bad step along the way, but I think we can agree that preparation has to be situational and the key is to be smart about how you're spending your time and practicing so that you know how to best prepare to meet your specific goal. So let's go to the next slide. And I want to kind of relate this back to the ARE exams. So when you look at the ARE exams, and this uh, illustration is from the, hand, the ARE handbook, the candidate handbook. You can see that there are two different types of items on in ARE exams. And the different types of items indicate really the different level of thinking or the different cognitive challenge that it's going to require you to absolutely use to be able to answer the item successfully. And you need to prepare differently. So one type of item is an understand apply. Um, and you can read on the screen what it says that type of item does. An example is developing and, and maintaining project work plans. But you're typically going to be recalling things that you may have read or things that you know, and you're applying them in a very straightforward way. Uh, like if it's a formula, uh, they give you some information and you would be um, using that formula to come up with an answer to answer the item. The second type of item is a larger or greater cognitive challenge. You have to have a deeper level of processing. And those are the anal analyze, evaluate items. And for those items, those are your whitewater items, 
right? You have to be able to take things that you may have read across different resources or across different chapters or across different videos and put those together in new and unique ways in order to successfully come up with the answer to the item. So an example of something at this level might be integrating building systems in the project design. The goal is that you need to prepare differently to answer different types of items. And for each of the ARE exams, some percentage of the items are at this understand apply level and others are at the analyze evaluate level. So let's go on to look at some of the strategies for understand and apply. Again, our goal here is to understand and recall the material. So there's a list here of things that you can do. You can watch the video lectures, read source material, attend workshops or review sessions. These will help you understand the material. But I can tell you that the worst study strategy ever is to read and reread and reread or watch and rewatch and rewatch. And the reason is that it doesn't make your brain operate at the level you need to respond even to those most foundational level. Also, your mind is likely to wander. So let's go on to the next slide and talk about ways that you can do to become creative, to become active, um, so that these are strategies that can help you understand and apply. Let me give you a couple pointers on each one of these. Some of these I know you have done throughout your academic career and um, you know, for other things that you've learned. And others you may have thought about and forgotten about. Others you may have not needed before and you need to use now. So highlighting main ideas in your readings is important. Now this is not taking your yellow highlighter and coloring everything yellow, all right? You have to discriminate when you're reading. What are the most important points? And if everything looks important to you, you probably have some more learning to do, okay? The point is that you're discriminating between the main ideas and the supporting points so that you can take those main ideas forward. Taking notes is another strategy that for some reason, um, as we've moved to using a lot of electronic resources, people are taking notes less and less, but there is still even very recent research on how important it is to take notes. The act of writing, for example, even more than typing, although Taking notes and typing isn't bad either, but it can help you with recall. You don't wanna just write word for word, but you wanna find those important nuggets and rephrase them in your own words and organize them on the page. So if you are reading, you wanna stop your reading periodically to take notes. And the same thing with videos, you wanna stop the video and take some notes and then go on with the process. Summarizing things in your own words kind of builds on that value of note taking um, because you are taking the material, the main points, and putting them into your own words. You can write it, draw it, or say it, but it helps you own the content. It's no longer um, in the page of the book. It becomes part of um, what's going on in your brain so that you can own it and use it when you need it. So related to that, and you know, this is based on the idea that our brains have actually different processing channels for audio information and for visual information, which is probably why some of you feel you can learn so easily from video because it uses both of those channels. But you can, you can create your own audio channel by explaining material to yourself or explaining material to the others. So it has some of the same uh, value as summarizing because you're putting things into words, but you're also explaining it, which means you actually have to hear it yourself. Now, you don't need to explain this to somebody else who knows the content. You can explain things to your children, to your pets, even to your imaginary friend if that works for you. The goal is to verbalize the main points. And it's another way you can get your network involved in supporting you with your studying. So creating and using flashcards. 
Flashcards are a really cool tool because they take a key concept or principle, they present you with it, and you practice recalling the information that you know. Now, it's not a great strategy for learning. So if you're using a flashcard strategy and you're not able to answer most of the flashcards, go back to the learning part where you're reading or working with the video and then come back and use flashcards to help you recall the information. Um, there's also a lot of value in not only focusing on the things that you miss, but also practicing again the things that you did well. So flashcards allow you the opportunity to recall things multiple times. And um, again, if your performance requires you to recall, which those understand apply items do, that's very helpful. And then actively participating in workshops and review sessions. So we've done some things to help you actively participate in this, even though there are many, many of you on the call. One of those things is taking your own notes uh, we've given you an outline to help you, but maybe you're sitting there with your own pens in your own system and also participating in polls. Let's go on, um, but I do encourage you to think about which things you'll add to your portfolio of strategies. Let's go on to the next slide, and we're going to talk a little bit about strategies for that second type of item, which are the analyze evaluate items. These are some of the strategies to analyze evaluate where you really have to make those connections. One of those is to watch videos or read about the practical applications of, the, of what you're learning about. You want to look for examples in your own environment. And what you're actively doing is trying to connect what you are learning or what you need to know for the test to what you already know. You want to participate in virtual workshops because often workshops are done at a little bit higher level and they require they will help you work on these higher level kinds of test items but it's important that you participate now you guys i know some of you are sitting in podcasts or listening to videos and you're multitasking you're doing other things you have to be able to engage with the content at the time of delivery or it's just like playing background music you won't learn from it. Another strategy is to create your own test items, which is to ask yourself if you were the test writer for ARE, um, what would you ask a professional about? What would you think is important enough to make a test question about? And by putting yourself in that position, it requires you to think about the content and how you would weigh or evaluate learning and demonstrating learning at that particular level. Now there's two others that I think, I put them here last because I think you'll find them the most compelling. Um, they happen to be something that I really like to do when I'm learning something new. Um, and one is called creating concept or knowledge maps. And another is just making drawings. So if you're a very visual person, these are things that are likely to work for you. So let's go on to the next slide and let me show you an example of a concept map. Okay, I pulled this out of Wikipedia just because my <laughs> the stuff that I put on my wall is really um, not fit for public consumption probably, <laughs> it's too messy. But here's one for electricity. So the author of this concept map has taken some of the key information about electricity and what they've depicted in this concept map are the relationships and the hierarchies among some of these different ideas, okay? So that it helps you see, look at sources there for the left, sources of electricity, mechanical motion, chemical energy, solar energy. So they're helping look at those connections and array those in a way that makes sense on a page. Now, if you're like me, I'm a Post-it fan. So what I will do is take a um, some flip chart paper and put that on my wall and I'll put my ideas on Post-it notes. Colored Post-it notes are even better so that I can move them around and make my maps and draw in the lines. Paper and pencil works just as well, but the goal is to study in such a way that you're organizing the knowledge that you have and you're gaining through your study. And by doing something like this, you can see how this could be a good tool to review the information. 
Now, someone could create one of these and you could look at it and gain from it. But the value is in creating your own drawings, your own concept maps, because those are meaningful to you and it requires you to process at that level. So being an optimist, I'm gonna see if we can launch the final poll, poll number four, and see which of these strategies is the most promising for you to add to what you're already doing or to emphasize, to rededicate yourself to as you prepare to take the next ARE. So go ahead and select the one that you think is the most promising. And it looks like optimism pays off because the poll appears to be in process. <laughs> yeah, looking good. Awesome. You can see how uh, the different types of test items require you to process more deeply and how you absolutely need to pick the right strategy to prepare for the exam at the right level. Um, again, reading, rereading, rereading, or watching, rewatching, rewatching will not get you to that level of processing. So I think we can close the poll now and see what you all had to say. Okay, watching videos, participating, creating your own test items. I didn't think that one would be quite as fun as drawing, although I did expect drawing to be the top the top pick for you. So that's that's good, uh, it's good information. So this is great. So there are some strategies that I think you see that you can, can add to your repertoire. And if you're preparing and you're finding it's not quite working for you, there's some more stuff that you can do. So the final slide, preparing for performance. You want to take practice exams. Like Mark said, the practice exams are what helps you pr practice under real conditions. And it doesn't hurt to take one first and see where your strengths and your weaknesses are. So that's one of the elements, one of the advantages of an exam. Um, so I wouldn't suggest you wait till the end of your prep to take a practice exam because it can be a valuable instructional and uh, evaluation tool for you to figure out where you need to focus. So with that, I will just, the last slide is just review. Um, and so these are the three items that we've covered. I encourage you to select the things that you think are going to be most useful to you and to adjust your preparation to help you be most successful going forward. I think Mark has some closing comments. So Mark, let me turn it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, of course, I just want to say to everyone who's tuned in to this, you guys are, uh, it's so smart that you guys are listening to this. Um, and I don't mean that just from like a self-serving perspective, but to take a few minutes here um, and to think about how you're going to spend your study time um, really effectively and, and efficiently is so smart. It's it's going to save you, I don't know, it's, it's just going to save you a lot of time in the, in the future. So uh, you guys should at least be recognized uh, or at least, um, um, I don't know, give yeah, yourself a, a pat on the back, I guess, Absolutely. at least for paying attention uh, and, and, and tuning into this particular topic. Um, I know that I wish I would have um, would have had something like this when I was coming up. Um, so, and I want to thank you, Dawn, for putting this together. Uh, this is going to help so many people, uh, you know, prepare and be successful uh, for passing the, the exams. Well, so you're thank so, you so welcome. Much. Yeah, and um, as I mentioned, our next ARE Live broadcast is going to be on January 21st in 2021, the next year, of course. We'll review the C and E uh, mock exam, construction and evaluation, with Mike Newman. We'll go through some, uh, about five questions or so. Um, so it should be good uh, practice um, for, uh, for that exam. Um, and we just posted a link in the uh, GoToWebinar control panel so you can um, register for that right away so it's on your calendar or just go to blackspectacles.com slash podcast to sign up if you'd like to look learn more about black spectacles test prep offerings one of the cool things i was thinking about don as you were going through that was um at our practice exams that we have at black spectacles which really closely almost exactly mimic the experience of taking the test um, we actually copied the user interface um, from ncarb uh, of course, we don't have the real questions. We've developed those on our own, but we copy the user interface, so it's the same duration, it's the same 
Um, it's oh, the so same smart. number of questions. It looks the same. The buttons are the same. The same calculator is the same. Like every little thing is the same. And in fact, we're working on an update, uh, which we expect to launch here in the next couple of days, um, which will reflect the brand new test. So it'll reflect the whiteboard um, and all the new tools and uh, the shorter uh, amount of questions and, and so forth. Um, Excellent. What's cool though is that we have multiple forms, which means if you're studying for the CE&E exam, um, we don't just have one practice exam for CNE. We actually have up to three. So that means what you can do is before you even start studying, you can take that practice exam and then study and then take a different practice exam, right? Maybe the second one, and then maybe you can take it again. And that'll help you get a sense of how you're progressing in the areas uh, where you're learning and the strength and so forth. Um, so if you want to learn more about um, that and any of our other ARE prep offerings, including our virtual workshops, our practice, I'm sorry, our video lectures and our uh, our flashcards, you can go to blackspectacles.com and we're sharing that link here as well. Uh, I mentioned we were going to have a, a giveaway. Uh, so the lucky winner of a Black Spectacles t-shirt is Nicholas N. So Nicholas, uh, we're going to reach out to you via email to get your size and shipping information. So thank you for uh, participating. And thanks to everybody who participated over on the community. Some good questions over there. I appreciate uh, everybody who posed them. And again, that community is always open. So it's not just for um, uh, it's not just for ARE Live. So if you have any questions, that's what it's there for. So if you want to post a question at any time, uh, we have a, um, a whole team of experts, uh, architects who recently passed the test. We're there to uh, to support you and help you get answers to the questions that you have. For those of you who are ready to start preparing and studying for the ARE right now, you can enter this coupon code, uh, A-R-E-L-I-V-E, -E, 121720YT. I had to get you a 15% discount for the entire duration of your ARE uh, Black Spectacles membership. And then finally, tomorrow, we'll email you a follow-up about today's live broadcast. So please let us know what you think and share any suggestions that you may have. Um, I promise we uh, read every word that you guys write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching.